So returning to my main point, the market economy is based upon cyclical consumption and labor for income. That's its framework. If machines replace human labor, it throws a massive wrench into the gears of capitalism. The second incompatibility, which is very similar as it relates to the market's need for demand, consumption, and growth once again, is that years ago, production was indeed quite difficult and arduous. 300 years ago, a shoemaker might produce maybe a few pairs of decent shoes a day. Today, a common automated shoe factory can produce a pair every 30 seconds or 4,000 a day. This move towards mass production and abundance was very alarming to the early industrialists about 100 years ago. And rather than see the merit of this from a social progressive standpoint, with perhaps the reduction of the work week or work day to compensate, perhaps even lowering costs respectively to try and create more socioeconomic equality. Instead, the opposite was done, which was to push to make goods with shorter lifespans for repeat purchases, planned obsolescence, along with cultivating a culture of consumerism. In 1927, Paul Mazur of Lehman Brothers famously wrote in the Harvard Business Review, we must shift America from a needs to a desires culture. People must be trained to desire, to want new things even before the old have been entirely consumed. We must shape a new mentality in America. Man's desires must overshadow his needs. Charles F. Kettering, the head of research at General Motors, wrote a famous article in the National Business Magazine in 1929 on the heels of the Great Depression titled, Keep the Consumer Dissatisfied. In this, he argued for the merit of consumer dissatisfaction as a force of his, in his view, social progress within a market, of course, stating change to a research engineer is improvement. People, though, don't seem to think of it in that manner. When a change is suggested, they hold back and say, well, what we have is all right, it does the work. We as manufacturers must offer those improvements after they have been found to be capable improvements. The public buys and disposes of what it has. If everyone were satisfied, no one would buy the new thing because no one would want it. The ore wouldn't be mined, timber wouldn't be cut, and almost immediately hard times would be upon us. You must accept this reasonable dissatisfaction with what you have and buy the new thing or accept hard times. You can have your choice. And if anyone is interested in this painfully myopic perspective, it's completely contrary to sustainability and public health and healthy psychology, I suggest um, a book by Elizabeth Cohen called A Consumer's Republic, which catalogs this grotesque transition. We went from a fairly puritanical view, a conservative view in a traditional sense, to one of, of robust consumption. They even talked about after World War II that this consumerism was a right, excuse me, a, a loyalty issue of America. And if you were to engage this consumerism, you would help defeat the communists and fuel the American dream. This brings me to the third incompatibility, democracy itself. 